It is always a good day. The first day of the year, I can turn off the AC, open up the bay door and work in my shop. To prepare for fall, I'm gonna build myself a fire table. Before I start cutting material, let me give you an overview on what I'm gonna be building. I designed the table to have a slotted design that will have plenty of room for multiple people to sit around and place their food or drinks on while socializing. If you're looking at getting into modeling projects, I recommend checking out this program called Make By Me. It is so simple to use without having a ton of modeling experience. The program comes with a library of material already in it so that if you want to build with two by fours, you can select the material, type in the size you want, and then populate it into the model. There are buttons on screen to flip, to rotate, to move it around so that you can quickly start building a project. The same process goes for one by fours or even sheet goods like half inch plywood. Another cool feature is after you're done building, their program will even generate a cut list for you, a material shopping list, and even a step-by-step -step process. I highly encourage you to check it out if you've been thinking about getting into 3D modeling. There is a link down in the description if you wanna check it out. Okay, once I was happy with everything in the 3D world, I moved to my shop and started building. The first thing I'm going to do is build a frame from two by fours. This is going to be a big box to hide the propane tank needed to feed the fire. By the way, if you want a cut list and dimensions on this table, I have a set of plans for it over on my website. And if this table is too big for you, I also have a smaller version available. After using the miter saw to cut down a few two by fours, I assembled them. What is this one? I first lay out all of my parts to do a dry fit. And this way I can make sure it all looks right before sticking things together. Here I'm using an exterior rated wood glue and a few screws on each joint. This is designed so that the top boards overlap the joints of the bottom boards. This is not only gonna create strength, but also makes it quick to put together. Next will be to sheathe it, to put plywood around the frame to create the box's body. Since this will be outside, I'm using an exterior plywood that is treated. I also painted the outside faces. This is because I plan to do a slatted design outside of this layer and wanted a dark color to be in between each slot. I'm attaching these sheets by first pre-drilling, then running in a screw along the bottom. Then also running a screw to connect the top of the boards together. And when going into thin wood like this half inch plywood, I switch over to using trim head screws like these here. The next thing I did was frame out the top side. These members will give me support to secure the top in the next step. They can be tricky to add since there's nothing except the plywood to connect them to the bottom framing. So what I did was use a clamp to hold it in place once I got it lined up to the top of the ply. Again, using the trim head screws to secure it. I started it with the two longer pieces and then connected the two shorter sides in between. Alrighty, now let's throw the top on. This is another piece of exterior rated plywood that I painted the top side of. The hole in the center will be where the fire tray gets inserted later. I lined it up to the body and then secured it down by first pre-drilling around the perimeter, then running in some screws. All over, I made sure to sink the heads of the screws so that nothing would prevent the slats that will come next to attaching flush to the body. All right, I'm gonna leave that as is for a bit and then start making the slats that will cover it. For this part, I'm going with Western Red Cedar 1x4 boards. This is what will take this boring box and turn it into something gorgeous to look at. I started by taking my full length boards and ripping them to width at the table saw. I made the slats half the width so that two slats could come out of one board. Now I'm gonna be going with a waterfall look so that the top boards will miter over into the side boards. To achieve this, I turned my table saw blade to a 45 and used the miter gauge to cut the boards to length. When setting up my fence, I placed a clamp and a scrap board to act as a stop block. Notice how I placed this far enough back on the fence so that the board will no longer be touching the scrap once it contacts the blade. If the piece you're cutting contacts both at the same time, it creates a pinch zone, which causes kickback. 
This is a fast way to make lots and lots of repetitive cuts though. To put the miters together, I used an exterior wood glue once again, and then also reinforced the joint with a few 23 gauge brad nails. Nice and simple. Next, I just repeated that same process to create a whole bunch of them. Since the pattern is the same in all four quadrants, I could prep all of the parts and have them staged on my workbench. This also gave the glue time to set up. And with that done, the next step flies, which is to start applying the slats to the body. So the sides will have verticals that come up and meet the top slats. With that, I want the top covering the end grain of the verticals. So I made sure to hold up a scrap to get the spacing correct. You can see I moved along as I work on securing that first board. But then after that, the rest can get laid down with just a spacer. I also moved the spacer along to make sure the slat is getting attached parallel the entire length of the board. See so me using it on the top, but then also on the side. My spacer is just a random scrap I found to be the size needed for the gap. When I get to the inside most slap, I hold it in place so that I can go to the inside hole with the pencil and mark that center hole opening. I think it's easiest to cut this now with a bandsaw, but know that you can also attach it whole and cut it after the fact with a jigsaw or even a flush trim bit with a router. The fire tray is gonna cover it, so there's no need to make this pretty. Oh, by the way, I am using a few streaks of dab Dyna Grip on each one of these before the brad nails. This is my favorite construction adhesive as it's incredibly fast setting and it works for both interior and exterior projects. You can see next I repeated much of the same process, but this time with just the straight vertical boards. These are butted up right to the underside of that overhanging top slat. And I make sure to use the same spacer so things remain consistent. One thing to note, all of these slats hang past the body slightly because I personally wanted casters on mine so that I can make this thing mobile when not in use. The overhanging amount will cover the added height. Oh, and this big gap here will be a removable panel to allow me to access the inside propane tank. I'm using magnets here and attach them by counter boring into the framing material, then screwing in a magnet. And I absolutely love these magnets with holes already in the center. Now I can attach a washer on a screw to the door on all four corners to correspond with these magnets. That's satisfying. Now this is starting to look like something awesome. It's hard to beat the beauty of Western red cedar. I absolutely love the variety of colors you get in the boards. Let's go ahead and put on a coat of finish to really see it pop. In order to get all of the nooks and crannies of the sides of the slats, I'm spraying on my finish, but you could absolutely just roll or brush it on instead. I'm using my Wagner HVLP, which makes very quick work of this step. For a finish, I'm going with the Total Boat Gleam 2.0. As it dries very quickly, it does a great job at leveling out on its own. And what I like most for this project is it has UV resistors in it so that the cedar will hold up even though it will be outside. Oh, I forgot to show you, but I attached casters. After attaching the slats, I tilted the box over and screwed on a few casters, which is what's allowing me to rotate this thing around to show you all sides. Once I picked out where I wanted the fire table to live, I started loading in the appliances to make it work. The tray slips right into the center opening and comes with pretty simple instructions on hooking it up to a propane tank. Oh, now this is important. You cannot use a regular propane tank and lay it down on its side. So you can either redesign this so that it can stand upright or you can buy one specifically designed to be laid over, which is what I did. Sneaky. Now I just needed it to fill it with rock. And then enjoy. As you can see, there is plenty of space for company to join me and also plenty of space to set drinks or a plate of food on the unit itself. Remember that I have plans for this larger unit, but also a more compact unit if you're interested in building one yourself. If a fire table has been on your to-do list, and I hope this video has given you some inspiration to knock it out this winter. Be sure to check out my website for a set of plans on this build as well as tons of other builds. And I will see you on whatever I'm building next. I don't smell any gas. I'll turn this on here, see if we can hear it. Okay. Oh. Ah! <laughs> Kaboom! <laughs> that would not be funny, to be clear.
Oh, three, two, one. Yes! Oh, yeah. 